A Psalm of David The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. My name's Arthur. Thank you for joining me as we meditate on Psalm 23. This is probably the most famous and most loved of the Psalms. This Psalm stands out in many believers' life because it declares the Lord is my shepherd. Who is the Lord? The Lord, Jesus. For Jesus said, I am the good shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep. And as Paul explains in Romans 8, if he lays down his life for us and rose again, surely he will give us all things. And this psalm celebrates the all things that God provides for his sheep. This psalm is part of a set of five psalms focusing on the king of Israel. And the role of a king is to shepherd his people. So this is the Lord Jesus fulfilling his role as king. As king he is sovereign. He has power and authority. He can do stuff. And his concern is to do stuff for us, his sheep. He explained in John chapter 10, where he said he was the good shepherd, that there were two flocks of sheep. One is the house of Israel, and one are the believers from the Gentiles. His ministry on earth was directed towards the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But now his ministry is extended to gather in the harvest of the Gentiles. And so whether we are Jews or Gentiles, we can rejoice in the shepherd care of our Lord Jesus Christ. The psalm then begins a psalm of David. David was the shepherd of the sheep. He was the shepherd as a boy. He learned to care for the sheep. But because his heart was attuned to God, he saw in his experience as a shepherd that the Lord was his shepherd. He needed a shepherd too. He needed someone who would oversee him, just as he watched over his sheep and protected them from the bear and the lion and the wolves. How he knew where the pasture was and searched out where the pasture was and led them to the fields where there was pasture. That he sought out where the water was, the clean water that they could drink, not the muddied water that had been messed up by other animals tramping through it the pastures where they could lie and rest and could lead them and would lead them from one place to the other. And because he was always with them and shepherding them and protecting them, they knew his voice and they would follow him. And he used this picture of of the shepherd to explain his own ministry. My sheep hear my voice, he said, and they follow me. The voice of the shepherd is one that we need to learn to hear, learn to recognise and learn to follow. This psalm is part of the set which identifies the son of David as the king of Israel. In the previous psalm, Psalm 22, we had the dramatic events of Calvary prophesied. The psalm begins with the suffering of Jesus on the cross and ends with the rejoicing of the victory that he wins, defeating death and delivering the righteous from death. Now he enters into this role as shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord, this is in capital letters, Jehovah, the God of Israel, is my shepherd. So David was not looking just to some man to look after him. He was looking to the God of heaven. And that's where we must look, 
not trusting men, but trusting God. And he says, because the Lord's looking after me, I shall not want. He knew the role of the shepherd was to be always on the lookout for the sheep. And so he would lead them where there was pasture and where there was water. It was the shepherd's responsibility, not his responsibility, to find these things. And so he summarises that experience. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He doesn't take us out of this world. We are in this world. The sheep need to do the grazing. The sheep need to go walking from one pasture to the other. The sheep need to actually drink the water. The sheep need the times of rest in the green pastures, grazing the pastures, chewing the cud. The Lord provides all these things, but they must appropriate them. But then there are injuries along the way. There are discouragements, there are frustrations, there are annoyances. And so he says, he restores my soul. That's my emotional being inside. He is the one who heals the wounds, who restores my soul, who puts it back together again. Well, there are stresses in life, and he restores them. And he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The believer is cared for by his God for the honour of the name of God. When we bear the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, then it is his reputation that is at stake, not ours. And so he leads us to walk in the right paths. He doesn't lead us into sin. Satan will lead us into sin. Our friends will lead us into sin. Our own desires will lead us into sin. But he leads us in the paths of righteousness, the paths of doing right, for the honour of his name. This journey sometimes takes us through dangerous places. In walking from one valley to the next, the sheep would have to pass through some narrow passes. There could be some spots there on the road where wild animals could attack them. And so there is the shadow of death, there is the threat of death, there is the overwhelming fear that death may come. But, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Why do we not fear? It's not that we have the strength to ward off any attack. No, it is your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I look to the power of my God. If someone should attack, then I look to the power of my God to deal with the matter. It's not within my strength, not even within my authority to deal with the enemy. I need to flee to the shepherd that he will deal with the matter. And the shepherd is there with me. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus, Go into all the world, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So the shepherd is with us as we go about our affairs day by day. Let's always remember that and hang on to that. And he goes on to say, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Now the anointing with oil is often used where there was an injury. So we may get injured on the journey. Just as walking down the road, our feet may be injured. So in the spiritual realm, you anoint my head with oil. So there is healing provided. My cup runs over. There is provision for all of my need. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Because God is with me. God is good. God is merciful. God is righteous. God is faithful. So surely goodness and mercy shall follow me because he is my shepherd all the days of my life. He doesn't just start and not finish the task. When we become a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, he seals us with his Holy Spirit. So God is with us through his Spirit in our hearts every hour of every day, even when we are asleep. But at the end of this journey, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We have eternal life that is promised to us. We dwell forever in his house. 
forever. The Lord is my shepherd. 